Hello ladies and gentlemen and welcome back to Not Your Professional Walkthroughs channel with me, your host, Max. This time we're gonna continue for Give Me Fodder, as we were able in the previous episode at the end, escape in this insane asylum, this strange thing chasing us and destroying just about everything and anything in its path. Now. I'm quite sure it's possible we're going to be facing some boss soon enough, so hopefully this is going to be a fun start to the episode. And if it's going to hit around the Steam sale for Halloween, it might be coincidentally good for my channel as well. As I unfortunately do not have the capacity to make a video for it. Uh, when I return from my travel, I'm taking four days off finally because this year has been quite difficult and I, I need some time to shut down so th this is something that I need to do for my mental health so that's what I'm doing and uh, I will probably try to take a look at the Steam sale and uh, see what games uh, are worth picking up because uh, if for example Resident Evil 4 or something like this would be discounted I can only recommend that uh, Dead Space and stuff like that like honestly last year games were absolutely ridiculous 2023 was absolutely brutal when it came to, comes to gaming and 2024 is like a bad joke with all the DEI uh, games that are being released uh, and I don't even know half of them because I just honestly don't care I'm apparently not the target audience and <laughs> It shows so with that all said we're gonna jump in and see how well can I do so wish me luck Oh, let me know how you like the adjustment of the audio because I had to like quite dramatically reduce the volume each time as uh, honestly like when the heavy metal starts it gets a little funky so yeah as i'm guessing there's gonna be a boss fight so let's go something pre-planted. Little confused on that one. Ah, Fudge, I have to... Uh, I keep forgetting about the, the uh, power-ups I picked up. How's our ammo? Okay, I was able to replenish this, so... Uh, I've gained one restart skill point, so... Okay. I'm not really sure what that means. It says restart. Interesting. Maybe it would allow me to, like, restart the mission, or...? I'm not sure. You've managed to kill this monster. And now, what's next? You hear a metallic sound coming from one of the coolers. It's Dr. Sullivan, hiding from the world. He recognizes your face. He slowly comes back to his senses. He gives you a key with the image of Cthulhu. You will open the gates of darkness with it. He directs you to the hills outside the city. That's where they took everyone. Your cousin is there. They're in great danger. Suddenly, 
something attacks Dr. Sullivan. He's dying in convulsions before your eyes. What is the fate of Lewis? You must hurry. Okay, so currently we're reaching new chapter. This one is quite freaky because in all of this space, like, uh, you can stumble upon an enemy, but trying to uncover a secret, well, good luck with that because it can be just about anywhere. You have quite a freedom of movement in here, so it's gonna take some exploration if you are into, like, the uh, completionist playthroughs and if you want to get all the secrets and all that stuff. Uh, in certain games, I've noticed that, that if you actually go for like all the collectibles or all the secrets, they can actually be quite helpful. Like, for example, when I played Warhammer 40k Bolt Gun and I played it on the toughest, toughest difficulty, uh, the fun thing was that actually going through the um, going through uh, the work of collecting all the secrets was quite useful just primarily due to one major thing i was able to obtain things like the vortex grenade which was like a powerful weapon which was able to soak up like one third of a boss uh, level hp pool and so those were like quite crucial things to pick up I have to be careful. So here in these mausoleums, quite a lot of times, the enemy is gonna be in there. We have been able to unlock the gate, but <clears throat> I'm still not done doing my exploration. Headshots in here, that's true. Even with the upgraded pistol, I think I have like a looter or some sort of rag to give it. But with this thing, now that I'm shooting these zombies, like it's a body one shot kill. So I'm quite happy with that. That's uh, worth the investment because uh, previously, like after six rounds, uh, there was, I think, reload animation because it was a revolver. Someone shoot me right now, I cannot recall. Uh, you actually should not be pressing R in this game because it's one of your power-ups which freezes the enemy in place. I cannot really find a secret if I'm being honest, but then again, my skills of finding them are quite shit, so uh, there's that. I'm not doing a playthrough to collect all of them. The great thing about this game is that uh, I would suggest it just because you can get two achievements simply by playing the game twice, once as the uh, something for my wounds. Once as the lady who is working for a newspaper. Uh, God damn it, the word uh, journalist uh, escaped me. And once as the priest himself, which is what I choose. I just I, I play usually as a dude because I'm a dude who plays as another dude who's disguised as a different dude. It's just more relatable that way to me, so that that's why I do it. I mean, don't get me wrong. Absolutely nothing against female protagonists. The story is good. Speaking of story, you rip to those who died at the sea, including Captain Top Phyllis, friends from the crew at the Blue Squid, December 6, 1925. I could have sworn I saw somewhere like HP pop up for an enemy, but I don't confirm it right now. So we're gonna continue through here. And probably this damn far. I would still 
probably be a little happy if I would have some throwable weapon too, but considering the 2D uh, design of, like, the enemies and everything, I'm not really sure how to do this work. Wolves can soak up quite a lot of damage. Using the pistol, I do have thankfully a lot of ammunition, so I don't have to worry. Well, the tissue is burning now. One thing which I kind of am unhappy though about, which is gonna sound totally freaking stupid, the fact that uh, I Unfortunately, could not take proper vacation, so I will still have to work while I'm away, at least one day. And I was hoping to take my personal laptop so that I can at least play Space Haven or some game, something uh, low key. But it seems like I will be able to squeeze it in my backpack, and I really don't want to have uh, extra luggage or have the bag a laptop because of the fact that I should not be traveling with the work laptop in the first place just in case some shit would happen to it, you know, kind of fucked up. Uh, I am trying to keep things low-key in Thank order for help. nobody to find out, so yeah. But uh, despite that, I'm, I'm kind of really looking forward to some time off and kind of feel like I've earned it. It has been kind of difficult this year. Probably a scene from my upload schedule and everything. But I, I have been uploading steadily for almost five years, maybe even more. Someone will have to check. And uh, I kept uh, working and doing other things as well. But I, I always kept like uploading, but lately it just things have been so hectic and I have been so exhausted. Like the, the, the only gaming I was able to Die. do was just simply like coming home after a long long day and just popping in something simple and, and just uh, having some fun and, and just relaxing with it. Like I wasn't really trying to work towards any sort of achievement or, or, or just some goal for the channel, it was just plainly because still at the end of the day I'm a freaking nerd and I love video games because they allow me to experience stories I would otherwise never have the chance to experience. And hell, I mean, some of the things which I was able to experience throughout the games is absolutely awesome too. You can come across a great soundtrack, whether it's this game, Stardew Valley, or, I don't know, Graveyard Keeper, or just a ton of other games, and then you discover these stories about the single person being able to develop a game. For example, Stardew Valley is one of them, Dinkum, which I did 100 days in a video game for, that one is done by one guy from Australia as well, so that's absolutely amazing too. Just trying to see if I have anything in my arsenal that would be able to deal with the moves a little bit better. Yeah, I mean, video games as a platform is great, it's just you have to navigate a lot of shit in order to find those champs and this is why probably a lot of people are trying to play like older titles. Lately I have for example seen on my feed that uh, because DICE has for example not given up on Battlefield 1, which is the one from the first world war setting, a lot of people are actually still playing that game. In fact because they added some anti cheat software to it, uh, it's, it's now even more popular, so that's absolutely great. The game is older, I personally prefer the second world war over the first world war, just because I love games like War Thunder, World War 
power ships and stuff like that, but yeah, that, that, that's the thing. In those games, fortunately, because they follow a free-to-play uh, system, uh, it's a little bit more annoying for you to make some sort of actual progress. Like, I've been playing War Thunder since before the game had fucking tanks, right? So, like, way, way back, like, when, uh, uh, Clyde Daly and Red Baron, or what, what's the guy's name, were doing, uh, just, like, the intro to War Thunder, and that's where they started and launched their channels from. Back at that time, I had no freaking idea how to record stuff, how to do anything like that for YouTube. I, I still feel like they mostly don't have a freaking but I feel like I found a solid foundation of things that I do enjoy and stuff that people respond positively towards. So that, that's kind of the stuff which I want to stick with in order to keep the channel fun and keep the content coming that I know people are gonna enjoy. Because look, at the end of the day, I don't have to really give a crap. I'm doing this just because I love to do it and because it allows me to actually kind of commit to a game and finish it. Like, a lot of times when I picked up a game, I had this sort of honeymoon phase where I played way too much, and, um, uh, like, at the start, I keep playing it like crazy, but then suddenly something snaps in me, and I'm like, uh, okay, this either works for me or I'm not interested. And uh, that's it, I never touched the title again, but uh, like even now, playing uh, Diplomacy is not an option, or going through some of the games which I was able to cover while they were in early access, and now they are fully released, that, that, just, that just fills my heart with joy because I see that the devs stuck to the concept and they managed to put out the full game, despite the fact that it might have taken them a bit longer to get to the finish line. But uh, then again, it depends. How big is your team? What's your budget? How much time can you commit to the project? And so on and such. And so, yeah, like if I, for example, have to suddenly for a few months stop uploading just to the channel, you can imagine that developing a video game is 10 times more difficult, especially considering the issues with, I'm, I'm not even still sure if one of the uh, softwares which uh, people use for uh, video games is still having that issue where the owners of it wanted to charge for every download of the copy of the game. God damn it, what's the name of the damn software? So, so many games run on it, so the, the platform. Um, I, I know the square, like, icon of it, but the, the name is just escaping me right now, but, yeah, so anyhow, we, we missed two enemies, I've destroyed zero barrels because there were none, i discovered zero secrets, I opened only one of the stories. So that's most unfortunate, but we're gonna keep pushing onward. I think through this sequence we're gonna end up in, like, either some sort of weird uh, swamp or something like that? I feel like there, there's something like this going to happen. Like I said, I haven't played this thing in a while, but I thought that this is like a perfect fit for uh, me to play, since I don't actually have anything really prepared for the upcoming Halloween sale. When the Lord will return, you will rise again. And because I'm traveling and I'm spending some money and I had the issues with the computer, kind of my budget is shot to hell, so if I did not uh, like save money and just buy games during like the sales and stuff like that, uh, what the Ghost? There's never enough of it. Now I'm like totally paranoid, thinking that whatever the hell that was is gonna pop up behind me at any point. I'm trying to see if I can spot something. Yep. 
should probably try the knife instead of the shells, but that does not seem to be working. Wow, that must have been the luckiest shot ever because I don't even recall. Dark pain. Look at this thing just soaking up those shells. Thing, but jeez, got to look like the Saint Asylum members here. That's great, man. I'm telling you right now, playing this thing at night with headphones on, I have chills running up my spine so crazy much. It's the soundtrack, it's the atmosphere. Like I said previously, if someone would touch my shoulder right now, I would probably grab my pants. Usually it's like in, in these stupid places where a secret can be placed. Okay, I actually think nerves. there's a secret at start of Project Warlock 2, like right somewhere in the start, you have to look through some tiny, tiny hole. Oh shit! I kind of do wonder if using the actual R key here would work in stopping this spirit, or whatever the hell this thing is, and chasing after me. Helping me out a lot than super concentrated fire. But compared to the original revolver which I had, it's not one shotting these bullets. <sighs> this close, I'm gonna sacrifice. The actual shotgun shells. Hell, I've been shooting, like, wooden boards to see if I can get somewhere. That did not work. Really no secret, no nothing. Really trying to be careful now with what keys I'm pressing, because <laughs> if it's gonna be one of the relics, that would be awkward as well. Horrible sight. Ah! So it worked! Haha! <laughs> I think I hear the yep. patient. I honestly don't know, like, the B series of the game, like, what are these guys called? I like, try to execute them so pretty fast. I'm not trying to learn their name, but I'm just loving how this guy is just hanging with like four to five of them. And he just doesn't give a flying funk! Okay, I just know this is gonna be something funny because of these spiky boys in the floor. I'm just thinking I'm gonna get ambushed by god knows what. I need to be brave. Yeah. Great small points to 
This just raises all the red flags in you to not go up this goddamn hill. But I have to do it. I have to do it. This shortcut is going to be dangerous. I just wonder how many secrets did I miss? <laughs> okay, there was only one. <laughs> but at least I opened all the damn secrets. Oh, God damn it. sort of weird altar summoning zombies it's like they turned all the corpses into reanimated zombies they just picked up medalli medallion and ability that when used will make all weapons not consume ammo for a while the skill also costs points gained through madness skill is assigned to the button okay i'm not sure if it's G key or We have like multitude of range attacks. Some sort of summoners. Okay, silence is golden. Okay, Amen to that. And honestly, sometimes I, I kind of wonder just why in the hell am I forced to go to the office? Uh, the, the conditions which I have at home, like I have actually more monitors than they would give me at work. And I work with a lot of like Excel sheets and the other nonsense. These so a cozy nest in here. I would just love to stay at home. But when I am at the office, it sometimes just drives me crazy. You okay, just know there's gonna be a ton of shit in here because a massive arena. So I'm trying to get rid of whatever. And I uh, already see the undead coming in through here. I must have a strong spirit. Check the other flank. I think there's our guy with whom I can save, actually. Funny as that is. I think I will have to go down. Yeah, I'm missing a blue key. They're gonna make me work for these keys, don't they, huh? Let's just do a quick a save. Shrine to mark my progress. A red key to blue or blue key. It's gonna be a funky one to do, but I believe in myself. I just know when I pick up whatever is down here, it's gonna be a hell to pay. Alcohol. I want to leave some of it just in case. Let's try to thirst through all this before I actually do the crazy thing and interact with the magical trigger object in this massive catacomb. All right, screw it. I am ready. So we have apparently red key. So I'm gonna 
gonna again quick save this. Thank you for your help. Yeah, it's probably better to use a pistol in here. Shotgun at these knuckleheads just due to the fact that they do carry the head, so even with a headshot, I'm still not helping myself. Uh, from up this close, he's dangerous jobs off. require proper uniforms. I'm trying to just peek behind these tombstones in order to see if there's anything funny lurking behind or any secret secret. I wish I could find a secret. Uh. Honestly, like, when, when you play through the game initially, and you don't go for all the secrets, and then when you just go play something second time, and you try to get all the secret, uh, you, you're just gonna laugh your ass off when you like find out just how easy it is to bypass a secret or how the hell were you able to pass the secret in the first place but I, I think that's a beauty of these games and the fact that they give you so much replay value drank to die, die to rise sounds a little funky so the more heroes apparently summon I have uh I have pistol and I have this SMG. Theoretically, it would be nice for me to look into upgrading the SMG, right? I can go, but I think these ones are the ones which are related to the thing with the, the, the grenade launcher gizmo. Uh, so do I need to get this one? I already have it, right? Uh, repaired and overclocked, uh, full automatic increased damage. Still don't have, like, three weapons. Uh. Let's go for this upgrade to maximize the potential. Uh. Cannot get this. I kind of wonder. If I need three points is, is that it that that's how many points i do need or is this like third level a little bit confused on this that is that never fully design. finished the, the to be honest i am stunned game so hence why i said that this channel allows me to actually try to push myself to the limit or try to complete the game. otherwise i just never get finished or just stick to game uh, far longer and this was uh, especially noticeable back in the day when I used to rock just the laptop I used to stick to a game like it was crazy because I was only working with very limited hardware and that's when I knew that this was something that I can see myself do because if you would rock 8 gigs of RAM on a laptop and keep publishing like a crap ton of videos of just playthroughs, but nonetheless you would stick to it, there's obviously some passion behind it. So Evelyn and Rick, they only gambled with their lives, never with money. And back in the day I actually used to be able, this was mostly due to the pandemic and not being able to go anywhere and do anything. I was able to do like even 10 videos per week for playthroughs, so that meant I was playing through games like crazy, but then this again, yet. I did not have the rich selection I have kind of access to right now. And so then when I started to mess around with my new system and play through things, I kind of found out that, uh, yeah, even like a, a proper... Mm, a tower could struggle recording something or there can be some issue so certain games I just never stuck to too much and again kind of that. being able to 
finish off the game is absolutely awesome. Especially if you invest your hard earned money into it. So it does not mean that the game is shit, it just means that due to some reason or just me prioritizing content for the channel primarily, uh, I just um, certain games never got to finishing or doing too much. But so the book of resurrection, omnibus of vital rituals, welcome what was once lost. It just, this, this sort of really throws me off from, like, you focusing. Making progress. And shooting stuff. It, it's just a weird choice. So, Doom Eternal, I'm not saying it's bad, but hell, no, far from it. Like honestly, the 2016 relaunch, the original version, more. Just because you you don't really jump around or platform that much, the maps or arenas are massive, and you will travel around to try to keep finding drops of ammo, armor, and whatever in order to keep fighting the game and all slot. But compared to Doom Eternal, where you literally have to turn yourself into a bloody gymnast. Especially when like those water units or whatever they called were going after you. Uh those guys were tricky to deal with. Like crazy, crazy tricky. This is just a spooky place. And and so uh to me it was just far better to play the 2016. That that's my opinion. That's the beauty of it. You can have a different opinion, you can share the opinion, you can let me know your opinion. Like which Doom game really, really, really loved, which Doom game did not really, really care about. For example, I never had the chance to play that 3D Doom, which was kind of like the relaunch done by ID Software before like Bethesda or however they work now were acquired it's really confusing all, all these like companies now merging and shit like you, you don't know who's owned by microsoft you don't know who's Supplies. owned by amazon you don't know who's owned by god knows who and then they keep putting out a ton of shit and you're just miserable because at the end of the day you keep returning to older games because at least there you knew that they had to be finished uh, and then when like Steam tells you, oh, you do not actually own any of the games, and then everyone starts making memes about pirating games again, it, it, it's, it's kind of hilarious, but uh, still making a point that pirating games back in the day when it used to be a little bit more like uh, accessible and not everything was constantly online and all this nonsense, um, Honestly, I've learned quite a lot uh, in trying to, like, not completely ruin our uh, family computer with viruses and other crap. So, I had to be careful, I had to work out to use demon tools and other softwares, and uh, it's a story for a completely a different video, but... Uh, yeah, I think we're gonna cut it off over here. I was able to kill 120 units. Uh, there apparently are no secrets. I was able to open all the stories. So there's progress. So this is gonna be it for this week. Uh, most likely next week I'm gonna be absent. And I'm gonna then try to get, again, some diplomacy is not an option or, or see what can be done. I've also noticed that Alan Wake 2 had some DLCs out. So 
considering like Halloween and everything, I might try to look into that, but due to some financial restraints and stuff, I will probably not be able to pick up too many titles at this point. So just a fair warning, but uh, yeah, I mean, it would be honestly far better if I would do 100 days for uh, a V Rising on Halloween or something like this, but uh, restrictions and uh, other issues keep obstructing me and because I don't do this full time, this is not my primary source of income. It's a little bit different for me, but I still do appreciate the amazing support. And like I said, the channel has lots of different content, which I would love to return to. And hopefully I will see you there or in the comment section or at the future uploads. Thank you all for watching. Have an amazing day, an amazing weekend. And I'll see you soon.